Number 10, the dance-off, Cadet Kelly. Kelly and Captain Jennifer Stone have been butting heads since the moment they met. You must be Captain Stone. Hmm. You're on my list. Maggot. Kelly is determined to maintain her individuality, which doesn't go over all that well in military school. Things come to a head between the two after Kelly is sentenced to serve the drill team, but a dance-off helps them put their differences aside. First, Kelly mocks her senior, but eventually, they both realise that they might actually make a great team after all. Kelly learns respect for order and authority. Jennifer learns that individuality isn't all that bad, and the audience learns just how awkward a dance-off can get. I mean, I think we could work something like that into the exhibition phase of the regionals. What? You're kidding, right? That, 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 this is my solo. <sighs> I don't even remember what I did. Number nine, nothing's wrong with me, except this dance, Pixel Perfect. One of Disney's more underrated movies, Pixel Perfect, focuses on the Zettabytes and their new front woman, Loretta, who is actually a hologram. <laughs> She's an instant hit with audiences, at least within the movie. For the rest of us, she's just a bit too much. Loretta is certainly talented, but her moves are very overstated and just downright unrealistic. We get that she's meant to be a perfect performer, but she might want to rethink that choreography. We first see it in a song, Nothing's Wrong With Me, which is kind of ironic given what some audience members may have been thinking at the time. <laughs> Number 8, Caitlin's Keyboard Dance, Camp Rock. We promise you that we have nothing against dancing, when it's done well. Sadly though, this scene isn't the one. Give it up for the awesome Caitlin Geller! <laughs> As Caitlin gets her spotlight during the already cringe-worthily named Pajama Jam, she does this odd keyboard dance that begins with some bizarre handography. it make you squirm, then maybe Mitchie's somewhat overblown reaction did. She's really good. Were we not watching the same performance? Luckily, Tess's misplaced jealousy brings it to a quick conclusion, saving us from any further second-hand embarrassment. Help! Help! There's a snake! Oh, a snake! <laughs> Considering that Alison Stoner is a phenomenal dancer, who's even performed with the likes of Missy Elliott, she deserved so much better. You can that people might actually like what other people do. Number seven, Troy gives Gabriella his necklace. High School Musical 2. What time is it? Time of our lives. Anticipation. After that explosive opening number, Gabriella starts to wonder whether summer vacation will be as fun as the song implied. Your summer activities consultant has arrived. <laughs> Hopefully some of those activities will include a job. Somehow this provides a segue for Troy to take the next step in their very Disney Channel friendly relationship. It's a rather saccharine moment as Troy places his necklace around Gabriella's neck, but the moment that really has us groaning is when she asks him about the tea on it. Tea is in Troy? Why? Yeah. Even Troy seems caught off guard by her question, and who can blame him? We thought Gabriella was meant to be some kind of genius. This really wasn't the finest moment for the pair, or quite frankly, for the writers. <laughs> oh, please. 
Number six, Cody gets intimate with The Lab, the Sweet Life movie. When Disney Plus announced that this movie would be available on the streaming platform, one of its stars and co-producers wasn't exactly thrilled. Is this your lunch? Ooh, it was. To be fair, we probably wouldn't want our most cringeworthy moments stored on the internet for all to see either. While there are a fair amount of offenders in this film, this is the moment that really gets our skin crawling. Welcome to the most advanced subterranean neuroscientific laboratory on Earth. When the twins are first shown around the Gemini lab, Cody gets well acquainted with the equipment. Is that the hydroisotope calubometer? Capable of reading the undetectable electrical charges in a minuscule brainwave. Perhaps too well acquainted. Oh, I love her. Oh. Shh. Baby, don't speak. This might have gone over your head as a kid, but older audiences probably did a double take and couldn't help but grimace. Number five, Lizzie masters rhythmic gymnastics, Lizzie McGuire. Lizzie worries that everyone but her has found a niche in which they excel. However, during gym class, she joins the ranks when she finds an activity that she's apparently amazing at. Lizzie McGuire, <laughs> something amusing you? No, no, not really. Then amuse me with your ribbon skills. Now, we're not sure what everyone else is watching, because all we can see is the actress hopping from foot to foot while waving a ribbon. It's not really what you'd see at the Olympics, is it? We want to look away, but we simply can't. The cringe fest is even more baffling when you discover that Hilary Duff has previous gymnastics training and can actually do a pretty killer round off back handspring. Oh my god, that was good! Number four, awkward sibling tension, life with Derek. As audiences got to know these characters, they started to pick up on the not strictly family friendly chemistry between step siblings Derek and Casey. The force field is activated. In fact, there were many who were rooting for them to get together. At times, the undeniable romantic tension between them was even intensified. Yes, we know that they're step siblings and not blood related. Derek, you are the most annoying brother. Step brother. Same difference. Yeah. And sure, it's not like they grew up together, but it's still weird. Maybe the writers were having fun indulging their audience with this will they, won't they. But clearly, someone at Disney thought it was too much. You might have noticed that the show wasn't included in the Disney Plus lineup. So congratulations on your victory, Casey McDonald and Derek Venturi. <laughs> Number three, Luke's uncomfortable crush, Jesse. This episode featured as part of Disney Channel's Freaky Freakend Marathon, a package containing a magic bell arrives, unleashing chaos as everyone switches bodies. What just happened? Why am I so short? Jesse and Zuri switch mid-argument, creating this excruciating scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fans of the show know that Luke has always had a crush on his nanny. However, in this scene, he's unaware that Zuri and Jesse have switched bodies. So when he makes this declaration, he's actually talking to his sister. Jesse, did you just call us buggers and poopy butts? I have never been so attracted to you. <laughs> Talk about awkward. As if Debbie Ryan acting as Zuri wasn't already uncomfortable. Much like the premise of this episode, we were all hoping that this was just a painful dream too. Number two, Camp Rock challenges Camp Star. Camp Rock 2, the final jam. With Camp Rock's future in jeopardy, Mitchy rallies the others as they prepare to take on Camp Star in The Camp Wars. We assume that this weird march slash chant that they're doing is meant to intimidate the competition. But if you ask us, Tess and Luke's faces say it all. They definitely look more confused than intimidated. Get back! Get back! 
and we can't help but feel embarrassed for them, especially when Mitchie smirks at the competition. Yeah, that's right. We're here on your stage. This scene hilariously became a TikTok trend, with users editing it into other scenarios. There's nothing funnier than watching the Avengers witness this cringe fest after all. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Mr Matthews talks the birds and the bees. Girl meets world. We're sure this isn't the talk Riley or her father envisioned. Maya, it's my father. He doesn't know anything. I know things. What is the body? What does the body want? I'm gonna tell you. Soup. <laughs> now you know everything. Rap battle. Adventures in babysitting. Maybe they should have left the rapping to the professionals. Okay, I admit it, I don't follow rules. I'm not good with kids, I'm not good at school. Lizzie finds her dark side, Lizzie McGuire. Her bad girl face was excruciating. She's a good girl at heart and knows it. By the way, cool jewels. Thanks, my parents TFO'd when they saw it. TFO, totally freaked out. Hey, <laughs> good one. Still your heart, Austin and Ali. There are times when a song and dance isn't appropriate. This is one of them. Call me criminal. I won't deny you make me want it all. Number one, that look. You know the one, Radio Rebel. Based on the novel Shrinking Violet, this comedy followed Tara, a shy high schooler who runs a popular podcast in the privacy of her bedroom. This is Radio Rebel, live from Slam FM. When her school's prom gets cancelled, she organises a morp, which is just prom spelled backwards, as her radio alter ego. At the morp, Gavin performs a song inspired by Tara. There's a girl I've liked for a while now. She's the kind of girl who's not afraid to ask a dancing sandwich for some help. Her reaction has gone down in infamy as one of the cringiest moments that the Disney Channel has ever put on our screens. Plenty of fans, including Debbie Ryan herself, have recreated the moment in their TikTok videos. It might have been a brief moment, but it makes us recoil every time. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.